This is the mud motor. I had a lot of people message me asking me about uh, how I built this and how they could build one, asking for links and whatnot. So I thought I'd give a little rundown of what I've done so far to get to this point and what I'm going to continue doing until this is actually an operable uh, mud motor. So yeah. So we'll start with the actual housing itself, as you can see. Uh, this is a 4-inch, 3 16 plate, both sides, and this is a piece of 6-inch. I had to do the 6-inch to clear the clutch, which I had more than enough space on each side, but I want to have enough room to get my fingers in around and, you know, mess with stuff if I had to. It's just uh, tacked on there right now. Don't mind this bracket. I had to actually spread the this apart to mount this piece of steel in here for the bearing, so I just had two pieces of metal tacked on each side with a clamp that, uh, like a... Uh, one of these style clamps reversed so I could uh, spread the box part. So yeah, I went in, tacked it together. I uh, got some, I think this is three quarter inch angle iron from Tractor Supply. Just tacked it on there. This is making a flange uh, because what I'm gonna end up doing is drilling and tapping this and it's gonna have a cover that goes here and then there's gonna be another co cover that runs all the way down to wherever the next plate's gonna be. So my buddy, that wanted me to build, or that is having me build this for him. He, I built him a long tail mud motor originally. I'll put the video in here so you can see what it looked like. Basically, this is the engine off that old motor. It's an eight horsepower Predator engine. So we already had that on hand. Everything else is not original to, to that mud motor. Basically, he wanted surface drive so he could easily maneuver it. And he wanted reverse because, well, with a long tail mud motor, you've got to swing wide to get that thing to t go in circles. And you get a steering radius of a school bus. So when you're out frog hunting and duck hunting, it's nice to have reverse, neutral, anything. So... That's what he wanted me to do. That's what I'm doing. This is a, like a Ford neutral reverse gearbox. You can get them for go-karts, lawnmowers, whatever you want to do with them. They're pretty simple. Just, you know, chain in, chain out. The issue I have with it is kind of how long this is. You can buy shorter versions of this, but they're more expensive for some reason. I don't get why. This is set up for like a Comet-style clutch, like a CVT-style, uh, like a, a snowmobile-style clutch. Basically, uh, the clutch end goes here, and then you get the one on the on the actual engine. The belt goes between it. That's why this one's so much longer. But I'm going to end up cutting this off, and then just probably end up drilling it and tapping it so I can put a bolt in there. If not, I might thread that down my uncle's lathe. I don't know yet. So this is like $140 roughly, if I remember correctly. That was with tax, free shipping of course because Amazon. But my initial plan was to mount it right here. Because he wanted to put electric start on this, but I realized that it's like four, it's like three hundred dollars for electric start on these on one of these because you need a new flywheel, new starter, everything. It's a pain to do that, and it would have been big and bulky over here. This is actually kind of a little bit more compact than I originally planned because I was gonna have everything centered off the center shaft of this motor. Basically, this is gonna be sticking off way you know to the side over here. It's actually not that bad. It's like you know. It's just a little bit off the edge of the motor. It's a little bit wider than I'd like because I like these to be more compact. I wish this was smaller because I'd literally stuff it right underneath the cylinder, but it doesn't matter. I didn't want super long chains running back and forth because then you get, you know, slopping them like that, which that's going to get a custom idler that I'm going to make that goes... Oh, well, it's actually going to go on top because the load part of the chain is on the bottom because it spins this way. So it loads up the, it loads up the chain like that. So i got to put an idler up here that pushes it down. This one's super tight. I don't like that. I've got a half link in there. I'm going to swap out with a full-size link, and then I'm just going to put another idler on this side. So the basic premise that I've come up with is chain goes in, spins this side, and you can see how it starts to move that chain down there. And uh, we've got our forward reverse neutral switch right here on the side of the motor. Kind of out of the way. It's kind of loose right now because I haven't put any like Loctite on that bolt. But it's just a basic idea. This was just a piece of aluminum angle iron I had. This was to kind of reinforce the plate also because the angles are different. I could have used just a piece of cold rolled, which is what I'm probably going to swap out for at some point. 
This was just temporary anyway, but it works pretty good for what it is. It's quite easy to operate. Uh, it's just a bolt welded onto a piece of flat steel. This is probably going to stay. I'll just make that look a little bit nicer. The, tr the actual gearbox itself, the way I bolted it on, was I set it in place, and you can see the, the piece of flat bracket here that I tacked on. Then there's another one. Oh, let me get down here. That's right there. That runs up to those two bolts. That was the first one I mounted in place. That's also the one that was centering everything off from. And then there's this one over here that you can see goes from that. I put a nice little twist into it. That goes to the bottom one, which reinforces this. Well, I can move the whole motor with just the gearbox. So it must be quite strong because it's mounted right off this. Uh, this hasn't even been welded onto the steel plate yet. It's still just bolted onto the motor right here. At some point, I'm going to end up welding it top and bottom. But I haven't gotten to that point yet because if I need to keep taking this off for some reason, I can do that. I don't take the whole motor off, which is a, a pain to say the least. So, And this extra plate was originally because, like I said, I was going to put the gearbox here. I'm going to cut this down with a plasma cutter when I'm done. And then I'm going to end up cutting sections of this up to about an inch. And then it's going to make just like boxing the bottom a little bit. So it reinforces that 3 16 plate right there, making it just a little bit more rugged. The next thing you can see, I have a pulley in here. Uh, we, I went with a pulley originally because I want to use a belt and realizing that shortly thereafter that I'd rather go with a sprocket. I have a leftover one here and then I had this one actually that I bought. I guess I was originally gonna use a sprocket in my head, ordered it and then thought of going with a pulley. I don't know why. And then I had this leftover from a project. It just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But I can put those in place of that. That way, if, you know, chain ever breaks, you don't have to pull this apart. If you want to put a belt on, you got to pull this all apart. And it's a pain with how much tension's on this. But like I said, this is going to get, you know, loosened up anyway. But again, it's a, it's a pain because this is all perfectly straight. But getting it in and out, you got to tap it in with a hammer. And right now, it's a pain to, you know, remove it. So... I figured putting a sprock, uh, putting a set of sprockets in there with a with a master link that you can easily remove would make you know the easeability of putting a chain on there you know a little bit better. So, and the reason this is so long right now is because I got to set the water line. I still haven't made the transom mounts yet. I'm gonna. I originally had uh, that bar right there. Where'd it go? I was originally gonna use my first transom mount, which you can just see is a piece of or two pieces of one inch square tack, uh, welded onto a set of C-clamps. It's not a bad way, bad design. I use this on the long tail. You've, you've used it on two other long tails and it works fine. You just mount another bar right here that goes across with two you know, little upriggers and the thing can pivot back and forth and then up and down. And it works well, it clamped really tightly. Had no problem with it. But with the leftover steel I've got here, I'm actually gonna make you know custom outriggers, uh, not outriggers, transom mounts. They're gonna be shaped more like, uh, more like that. You get the idea and then the bolt's gonna go right here. Regardless, that's a really terrible picture, but you get the idea. I'm gonna build two of those, box them, and then mount them directly onto the actual, uh, whatever you wanna call this, the chain case. So once I get the transom mounts done and I know where this sits, I'm going to mount it to my boat and where the bottom line of the boat is, because that'll always be underwater, clearly. Uh, I'm going to mark that on this, cut it, cut the bottom of this off. I know I'll have some leftover scrap, but scrap metal's not a problem for me, especially since I'm not paying for it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to cap the bottom of it off, make another one of these plates like this one, but it's going to be much bigger because I don't have any tube here, but of course there's going to be the tube that comes off it like this, and then I've got to build a custom piece that goes in the end of it. So the piece I've got to build which I'm having somebody actually do the machine work for me. It's gonna look something like this. I'm looking at my camera while trying to draw and it's not a good idea. Uh, there we go. Boom, that is sexy. It's gonna look something along the lines of this right here. Not to spec clearly, but close enough. Basically the tube's gonna go in here. And there's gonna be a bearing here and a seal here. So that's going to be all one milled out piece. Well, it's going to be done on a lathe, but it'll have a seal in it and a bearing. And then I'm going to mount another one of these. I have, I bought a pack of four of these and it's going to get mounted like, like right there, but it's going to be 
inside of the actual box so it's sealed off. I'll seal the nuts and bolts off with some uh, some silicone. But there'll be a plate that runs up here and it'll be it'll have like four mounting holes into it and you can put the whole shaft right up against it and then put like some RTV or some gasket paper or whatever to seal it. Some bolts through it. I'll weld some nuts to the back side. And then you can just basically bolt on the the whole shaft tube that'll go on. And then once I put the there's going to be a door or a bolt-on plate that'll go down to it, and that'll get some bolts along the angle iron there. That'll have like a downrigger that goes from there to the actual tube to support it. And then of course I'll have the flap and the, the skeg and whatnot. That's kind of the idea I'm going with. Uh, so far, everything's kind of to what I'm doing except for the mounting of where the gearbox is going, of course. Everything else is kind of going together the way I want it to. Uh, the motor fires right up, which you can see in that video. It literally, that was like the first pull. It fired, fires right up. So I've, there's a few other things I got to do. Make the, the chain tensioners, because there's going to be two. Actually, there's going to be three with the other chain going in here. And, of course, I got to fully weld it, make the transom mounts. There's a lot of extra work to be done, but I'll be filming it for you guys to see. So thank you for watching. Like, follow, subscribe. I'm always doing stuff like this, building different things around the shop.